Hello my friends, welcome to my channel, The Wiggles Project. My name is Jennifer Sullivan and I was diagnosed with young onset Parkinson's disease when I was 38 years old. I'm now 46. In today's video, I would like to share with you the, the story, the trauma that happened to me that became the inspiration for The Wiggles Project. And what happened was um, I like to play poker and there is a casino that's uh, nearby that has a beautiful poker room. I have played in this casino for years and I had never ever once had any issues at this casino. And I'd say right around the time when it happened, um, leading up to it, the, the couple of months prior, I was having what I would say would be like a rougher time with dyskinesias, more so than usual. And so at this casino, I was in um, a Starbucks and a security guy came up to me and he asked me if I was okay. And then I said, yes, yes, I, you know, I have Parkinson's and this is what happens sometimes with the meds. He was super nice, walked away, you know, wished me well, all that stuff, and it was fine. The second time it happened, it happened outside, and a security guy on a bicycle asked me if I was okay. I told him the same story, and it was all good. But the third time that it happened, it, it was, it didn't go well, let's just put it that way. It was, it was one of the worst experiences I have ever had as, as a person, as a customer. It was beyond awful. So this is what happened. I was there in the daytime. I wasn't drinking any alcohol. It was the daytime afternoon. I was having an amazing poker run. I had just won like a $600 pot. It was awesome. And then I went outside to smoke a cigarette. <laughs> and so I go outside. I'm not talking to myself. I'm not causing any trouble. I'm not doing anything. I have the wiggles. I am dyskinetic. And so I, I go outside and then a security guy on a bicycle rolls up to me and asked me if I was okay. And I said, yes, you know, and then I told him about my Parkinson's, super friendly, but then he asked me for my driver's license or identification. The other two security guys hadn't asked me that and I knew right then and there that something something was wrong. He looks at my ID and then he's got like a little earpiece in and he's talking to somebody and then he looks at me and he says, were you asked to leave here in 2017 for trespassing? And I'm like, oh my God, no, like, no, that wasn't me. Like since 2017, which 2017 was the year that my um, pub got hit with the semi truck. But since that year, I mean, like I, I had been playing in that casino for all of those years. No one had said anything and you have like a, a player's card. You would think if this person that they are thinking that I am was so bad that like when I used my player's card to play poker or a slot machine, that there'd be like, ding, 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 this person's not supposed to be on the property. But anyways, I was like, no, that's not me at all. <laughs> like the guy clearly didn't believe me. And so then I asked if I could speak to a manager and I was still very polite. And then my symptoms started to get, just because of the stress, my symptoms, my wiggles started to get worse. And then three guys come down and I don't think that they were really managers, but I tried to explain that like, you know, I'm like, I don't even have any like moving violations in my car. I'm like, this is this like, this is just so not me. Like I used to own a bar. I was the person kicking people out like, oh, this is just a misunderstanding. And it was very clear that I had to leave and that they didn't believe me. And it was, it was my impression they used that as an excuse to ask me to leave because it's not like they approached me just like a normal person. They approached me because I was dyskinetic and they assumed the absolute worst of me as a person. That if I have these extra movements, that must mean this girl is a tweaker. She's on drugs. We need to get her out of here. Um, and yeah. And then what's even worse is like, so my symptoms are just terrible. I, I, can, I can almost not even walk. I was shaking, like my whole body was shaking, but I still had like, I had like $700 on the poker table and chips. So then I have to go back into the poker room 
And you know, and I know people and they're always, they've always been so nice to me. And I talk with the manager and I've got my mask on and thank goodness at least I had the mask on because I was sobbing. I mean, I was just like in hysterics. I just, I could not believe that this was happening to me. And while I waited for the manager to get my poker chips, there was a security guy behind me keeping his, his eye on me just in case, you know, I was about to go like ballistic, you know, which like I said, the entire time I was very nice. Um, I didn't want to cause any trouble and, you know, hopefully we could figure out, you know, what had happened, you know, down the road. But um, so I, I, the security behind me and then the manager came out and I was just in tears. It was just so, so awful. So I do my best to walk, you know, back to my, my truck. But like, I mean, I was just like all over the place in terms of, of my dyskinesias. And then so obviously I couldn't drive. There was no way that I was going to get behind the wheel. So I opened up the, the rear of my Toyota 4Runner and I sat in the back so I could still get some fresh air and you know breathe because it was almost like hyperventilating. And then of course there's a security guy filming me with his camera. And like it took me about 30 minutes before I could like finally settle down. And this is a 19 second clip from the, the, the moment that all of this was going on, I had called my lawyer and then I had filmed this little part of me um, and here it is. And I can't drive now. My symptoms are so bad and I'm so stressed and then they're sitting there staring at me and I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know what's gonna happen. They're gonna call the police on me. This is terrible, terrible. <sighs> Yeah, it was terrible. So they approached me because I had dyskinesias. And then they claimed that I was somebody and maybe they had somebody with the same name. So clearly I was very distraught. And I, uh, I later was able to talk with my therapist who's amazing. She's always still there for me if I have some kind of a moment like, like that. During our conversation, she asked me if I would be able to turn this negative into something positive. And so that was where the, the idea for the, the Wiggles project just kind of started to, to form. Um, because life is really short and I don't want to dwell on that negative experience because the reality was, was every other experience, you know, since the place had opened, had been had been wonderful. The staff has always been nice to me. I've just I've never experienced anything like it. Period. And I hope to never experience anything like it again. So the Wiggles project, that's where I started to get this idea, and I started to call around to different casinos. Like initially, my my thought process was like, oh, you know, maybe I could do some kind of a training for like casino um, security people. You know, maybe they don't know that about Parkinson's and that young people can get it. So I called a Harris um, head of security and he was super duper nice. But the thing that he told me was that you never, like the rule is basically, you absolutely never approach anybody that is in the casino unless they are clearly a harm to somebody else or to themselves or they are like beyond drunk, you know? And I, I, I didn't, I wasn't any of those things. I wasn't, you know, endangering anyone else. I wasn't in danger to myself. I wasn't talking to myself. I wasn't yelling and screaming and being mean. I wasn't any of those things. I never should have been approached in the first place. Young people do get Parkinson's disease. And so if this video makes its way into like, you know, some security training, uh, that would be great because, and even if it's not at a casino, there needs to be some kind of way to, you know, to where you identify, like truly, like is this person, on like illegal drugs, are they a har are they about to harm somebody, or you know, or are they somebody like me, who has Parkinson's disease and unfortunately sometimes has you know some some side effects called dyskinesias that make you look funny uh, in in some instances, and you know, and like, and I, I play there all the time and have never had any problems, even when I've had the wiggles, so. 
I don't know. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd, I'd share that with you. And if anybody's had it, it, an experience like that, um, feel free to share them. I really appreciate everybody who's been reaching out to me, who's been commenting. I feel like our, our community is coming together, like the seedlings are being planted for a wonderful place for us to kind of share our experiences, to learn from each other, and um, spread the word about young onset Parkinson's, Parkinson's disease, and how it affects us, and the world around us too, because more people should know um, what's going on when they see somebody perhaps with like, you know, these exaggerated you know, movements. And by telling this story and sharing this video, I'm not out there looking for sympathy. This should never happen to anybody. And I know that it's very idealistic of me to say that, but it's, it's, not, it's not impossible um, because there have been things in the past that we've misunderstood and then we've found ways to educate each other about them. And Parkinson's is the number one, I think, fastest growing neurological disease in the world. So this is something that everybody really needs to know about and understand, especially too, um, in, in like when you're also starting to, to, to get some of the early symptoms or signs. You know, if we're more aware of kind of what to look out for in each other, perhaps we also won't have so many people who are just kind of going through, you know, this like endless loop of trying to figure out and get a diagnosis of, you know, what's going on with them. But yes, I'm so glad that that day's over. I have gone back, um, not that often. I, you know, I don't play that much, but when I do, you know, I really, I really love cards. I used to play, Gin Rummy with my grandmother. She got me into cards and strategy and you know, I just love stuff like that. So it's a, it's a nice option to have it as an, as an escape for, for me. Um, but it was a really sad day. And so anyways, let's um, end on a good note. I wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you to like the wonderful people who've commented, who've reached out to me, have shared their stories. Keep the comments and questions coming. If you've had something similar happen to you, uh, what did you do ab about it? How did you handle it? Is it something that, um, you know, maybe you got therapy for as well? And you know, like I said, this is why I love my therapist so much because when she asked me that question, like, do you, do you want, can you make something positive out of this negative? And I was already sobbing, right? But I was just like, oh God, this is why I love you. It's like, I love her even more for that because it's like, yes, yes, of course, like I can, I can, I think do that because I don't want to be in that negative realm. I mean, you know, I'm gonna feel what I'm gonna feel in that moment, but it's like, okay, snap out of it. Is there something good that I can do with it? And so hopefully I am and Thank you so much.